So I am going to show you type ID. It is one of a few runtime type identification constructs. In your head, you should keep in mind that if you're ever using runtime type identification, it should cause you pause. You should think, do I really need to do what I'm doing, or is there a more object-oriented, polymorphic way of doing what I'm trying to do? Okay, but, but sometimes there isn't. Sometimes you're forced to do these things. So I'm going to show you these tools in hopes that you'll keep them tucked away deep in your toolbox and only pull them out when necessary. So the first tool I want to show you is type ID. So notice I have a base here and I got a derived one and a derived two. And I'm going to print out, I'm going to say type ID of base. And that returns a type info object, which has uh, a few useful functions. Mainly the only one that's really useful to us, though, is name. So let's call that. And I'm going to uh, put an inline here. And then control L, control VV. I'm going to take derived one. And let's just do derived one. That, that should be enough. Run it. And here we have class base, class derived. So this could be a useful debugging tool when you have a pointer, a compile time type pointer of a base type pointed to a derived. Then you can actually get the the runtime type out. So let me let me show you a little bit how that works. Uh, let's get rid of these. So I'm going to say base pointer b gets new. Let's say derived one. And then I'm going to say okay, see out. Uh, type ID star B and line. Okay, and the reason I have to oh wait, I need my dot name. Dot name. The reason I have to dereference it here is if I say, well, what's the type ID of, of just B, I'm going to get the type ID of a base pointer. But instead I want the type ID of what I'm actually pointing at, which is uh, derived one. So so let's re-dereference that. And let's run this. And uh Hopefully you look here, and you s I, I would hope you were expecting derived to print here, okay? Because b is actually star b is actually derived, but we still get base, and that's because this value, this this um, uh, value here, is being determined statically by the compiler, because we have not turned on polymorphism for this hierarchy here. And remember, the way we turn on polymorphism and in a hierarchy is we have to have the presence of a v table and the way we get a v table is by declaring a virtual function in the base type so now let's uh let's rerun this and see what happens class derived okay notice the the output we get a derived now instead of a base and the runtime was able to figure that out based off the v pointer and uh that's why we call it runtime type uh Identifications because we identified the type at runtime, but the only way we way we were able to do that is with the presence of the v table. Okay, so let's look a little bit more about what type ID does. Type ID returns a type info object, so I need to do the include if I want to actually define a define one of these. I have to uh, include type info, and then down here, here's another key concept: the compiler creates one type info instance per type. So it's a static instance per every type that we have in our program. So there's going to be one for base, one for derived one, and one for derived two. So when I come here and I say uh, uh, type info, type info, t gets type ID of base, I actually get a compiler error. We can Look at the red squiggly. It's going to say, hey, um, cannot access private member declared in type info. Um, basically, there's no copy constructor. There's no assignment o operator. It's all private. If we want to, we, invoking this assignment operator would invoke the assignment operator. But, we, but it's hidden. It's private. We can't do it. It's turned off. So type ID, we can take a reference of what's returned, but it still complains because it's also constant. So I have to say, okay, const type info t. So now t is a reference to the one instance of the type info object for base. Okay, so now I can come here and say t dot, and we get those same functions that we got when I just invoked it directly off of type ID. 
Okay, so let's look a little bit at what type info. I'm putting my cursor on it. Go ahead and hit F12. That takes me to the class declaration. For uh, for the 0x standard, they added this hash code thing. Um, there's also, uh, let's see here, there's the equality operator, the not equal operator. I'm going to show those in a sec. And then there's this before thing. It's internal. You can look it up. Don't use it. There's also raw name, which is internal. So basically, the only thing that's really useful to us, if we want some human readable string is the name okay but generally we're not doing that generally what we're doing is we'll go back to a base star b gets new and it could be derived one drive two random runtime determined by the runtime type and remember how i tabbed this off the screen uh in a previous video anyway so all we know that is b is a pointer to a base so i can say okay if type of or not, not type of that's c sharp forgive me type id of star b is equal to type ID of derived one. Then I could do a static cast in here and and cast it to a derived one and do derived one kind of things. Which again we don't want to. I mean avoid this like the plague. But if you had absolutely had to, you could. Okay. Else if uh, type ID uh, star b is equal to type ID derived two, then in here we could do derived two-ish kind of stuff. I just probably need an opening like that. So, And just to show you that this works, I'm going to print derived one. And down here, let's print derived two. Okay, let's run that. Should be good. And we get drive two because B is actually pointing to a derive two. Just to make this more interesting, um, let's randomize this a little bit. So I'm going to uh, get a random boolean, rand uh, mod two equal to zero, and that 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 returns a random boolean, true or false. Uh, and then if it's if it's true, let's assign it to a new derived one. Else, let's do a new derived two, and then it's probably gonna complain because. Drive one and drive two. I have to, because of the rules of ternary operators, I have to cast one of these. I could cast both of them explicitly if I wanted to. I have to cast one to a base because now the ternary is going to say, hey, before I was saying you were trying to return a new derived one or a drive two, and they're not compatible. I can't convert one to the other. But once I force it to upcast the base, then it sees, oh, okay, this upper expression is going to return a base. And this uh, bottom one's going to return a derived two, and a derived two is convertible to a base, so so that happens. But now we randomly b is going to be either a derived one or a derived two, and so using this runtime type identification, I can detect exactly what it is. Looks like this time we got derived two out of out of the bargain. So anyway, we can uh, run this a few times just to drive two, drive two. Oh, it looks like drive twos being favored. Uh, we can go all day. <laughs> Am I ever going to get a derived one? Maybe there's something wrong with my code. This this makes you self-conscious when you're... Huh. Oh, I know what's wrong. <laughs> I need to seed my random number generator. So, let's do uh, seed rand uh, time zero and uh, let's pound include C time. Basically what I'm doing here is every random number generation algorithm has to start with a number and so I'm just going to start with the number returned by time which is some clock dependent value so anyway now when we run this a few times drive two ah we're getting drive one now okay anyway whew. hopefully you're you're looking at this and saying oh, that's kinda ugly I don't, don't want to do that well that's good that's good <laughs>